something different happened last fall. For the first time in a long time, I made a Pixel phone as one of my daily drivers and it's a decision I don't regret after putting the Pixel 8 Pro through countless photo shootouts and comparisons against all the best phones around. Now that its successor is finally here, I have high expectations for the Pixel 9 Pro XL. That's because the Pixel 8 Pro stuck around for almost a year even when newer Android phones like the OnePlus 12 and Galaxy S24 Ultra tried to tempt me away from it. Google's rearranging its Pixel lineup because instead of just one flagship model, we are getting two Pro models instead. Technically speaking, the Pixel 9 Pro XL is the direct successor to the Pixel 8 Pro because of their similar sized screens, whereas the Pixel 9 Pro has a much smaller display. I break down all the details about them in my Pixel 9 and Pixel 9 Pro versus Pixel 9 Pro XL comparison. Given the opportunity of the iPhone 15 Pro Max and Galaxy S24 Ultra, Google's arming the Pixel 9 Pro XL with bigger upgrades like newer cameras, more helpful AI features, and a stronger, more durable design. In my Pixel 9 Pro XL review, I will see if it's a worthy update that could convince people to choose it over rival phones. Frankly, I'm annoyed that we are getting back-to-back -back price hikes because the Pixel 8 Pro launched at $100 more than its predecessor last year with its $999 US dollar starting cost. And now, with the Pixel 9 Pro XL, it's up by yet another $100 to a starting price of $1,099 US dollar in the US. This effectively ends one of the best parts about getting a Pixel phone, their discounted prices. Pixel 9 Pro XL pre-orders are available right now with steep discounts on the flagship phone when you do a trade-in, although it will be available online and select retailers starting on September 4. There's a total of 4 colors at launch, Obsidian, Porcelain, Hazel, and Rose Quartz. I do miss the Bay option for my Pixel 8 Pro, but I do like the Rose Quartz color of my Pixel 9 Pro XL review unit because of its lighter tone. I'm really annoyed that the base starting storage is still 128GB. First and foremost, I love the redesigned camera hump on the back of the phone because it's much more pronounced than ever before. The elongated pill-shaped protrusion in a departure from the edge-to-edge -edge camera bar in past pixels, but it's exactly what it needs to set it apart from other phone designs. Apart from the camera arrangement, the design of the Pixel 9 Pro Axel makes it look early similar to the iPhone 14 Pro Max due to the polished metal frames that are now flat as opposed to contoured. I know others may like this change but it doesn't feel as comfortable to hold as the rounded edges of the Pixel 8 Pro so it's something I'm just going to need to get used to. Despite this, at least it's still sporting the same matte gloss surfaces as before to give them that always clean smooth look. Google claims that the design is twice as durable as the Pixel 8 Pro with its IP68 construction, especially with Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2 protecting its screen. During its Made by Google event, the company made an outrageous claim that Pixel 9 Pro XL 6.8-inch Super Actual display reaches a peak brightness of 3000 nits. I didn't think it was ever going to get close to that in our testing, but I was mistaken. Hands down, the Pixel 9 Pro XL has the brightest screen we have ever tested, reaching a blinding peak of 2469 nits, a substantial improvement over the 1526 nits of the Pixel 8 Pro. And you know what? It shows outside when I play the same 4K HDR clip with the Pixel 9 Pro XL being noticeably brighter than the Pixel 8 Pro. But it doesn't end they are either because this OLED panel looks marvelous with its rich color tones and wide viewing angles that barely show any distortion when I look at it from an angle. This record-breaking mark is hard to believe, more so when rival phones like Galaxy S24 Ultra tops out at 1326 nits. 
I am starting to believe that phone makers are leaning on software more so than the hardware to propel their cameras and the Pixel 9 Pro XL is proof of this. That's because its triple camera system consists of a 50 megapixel main camera, 48 megapixel ultra wide and 48 megapixel telephoto with 5x optical zoom. Technically speaking, the main and telephoto cameras are identical to Pixel 8 Pro, however, the ultra wide benefits from a wider f1.7 aperture which makes it more suitable for low light. While the rear cameras are similar for the most part, it's the selfie camera that gets the biggest upgrade. A pixel crunching 42 megapixel autofocusing front camera with a wider 103 degree field of view. I won't spill the beans on how it performs just yet, but it's undoubtedly a big upgrade if you intend on using it a lot. Meanwhile, the camera interface is just as intuitive and robust as ever before, since it's a pro model, shutterbugs like myself appreciate the pro controls that let me dial in a few of the camera settings manually. The only new changes include the Add Me feature, which leans on AR guidance to let the photographer be included in the shot along with how panoramic photos are taken. Here are some camera samples of Google Pixel 9 Pro Excel. Another reason to choose the Pixel 9 Pro Axel is because of its ability to shoot at up to 8K 30fps, whereas the previous Pixel 8 Pro caps out at 4K 60fps. On one hand, I like the extra utility of 8K recording because it gives me more playing zoom to edit videos by cropping them or adding digital pans or zooms in my video editing software, but you will need a high performance machine to handle them. While there are plenty of shooting modes and settings to adjust with video Video, like choosing between 24, 30 or 60 FPS, it still lacks full manual controls to get me the look I really want to go after. Here are some video samples of Pixel 9 Pro Excel.
The biggest area of opportunity for the Pixel 9 Pro XL is without a doubt its processing performance mainly because last year's Tensor G3 underperformed against rival chips like Apple's A17 Pro and Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. With the Tensor G4 calling the shots, it's an improvement over the Pixel 8 Pro with Geekbench single and multi-core scores averaging at 100, 929 and 4747 respectively. On paper, it beats Pixel 8 Pro's scores of 1699 and 3666, but it trails the performance benchmark results of the iPhone 15 Pro Max and Galaxy S24 Ultra. Despite this, I am happy to report that its performance is buttery smooth and responsive with all the normal functions I do on my phone. I am also pleased by how it manages to keep more apps in memory with its upgraded 16GB of RAM, which means less refreshing if I am multi asking. Over on the graphics performance side of things, it's a minimal gain running 3D benchmarks while life unlimited test to see how its GPU handles. Its 55.63 FPS score in well in line to what I expect out of a flagship device, but it's barely an improvement over the Pixel 8 Pro's 52 FPS score. And compared to the Galaxy S24 Ultra and iPhone 15 Pro Max, the Pixel 9 Pro Axel doesn't come close to matching their insane frame rates. But don't let GPU performance tests be the single determining factor because I loaded up Age of Origins and Modern Comfort without any hitch to either of their performances even when there's a lot of action happening. The Tensor G4 might not be the speediest piece of silicon on the market but it's certainly bringing along improved power efficiency. That's because of Pixel 9 Pro Axel has 5060mAh per battery which is marginally better than the Pixel 8 Pro's 5050mAh one. Given how the Pixel 8 Pro came up short at 10 hours and 3 minutes in our battery benchmark test, I'm impressed that Pixel 9 Pro Axel beats it in stunning fashion clocking at 14 hours and 37 minutes at its longest. This is the kind of leap I want to see in any successive device, so I am delighted that we finally have a Pixel with extraordinary battery life. It has taken years to get here, but it's lasted me easily through a day with little worry. In fact, it hovers around 15% battery life each night right before bedtime. Battery life is a key area people look at when buying a phone, so it's long overdue that a Pixel can finally keep up with the competition. On the flip side, the Pixel 9 Pro XL also gets a boost with faster 37W wire charging, which is slightly off from Pixel 8 Pro's 30 watt charging. This results in getting 63% charged when in 30 minutes of charging, while the Pixel 8 Pro got to 59%. However, wireless charging is still capped at 15 watt with the use of a second gen pixel stand and a slightly slower 12 watt speed with qy wireless charging usually pixel devices launch with latest version of android but google's choosing to launch the new pixel 9 lineup with android 14 as opposed to android 15. I know there are people who are on the fence about this decision, but I'm not. Yes, there are certainly new features that accompany Android 15, but the new exclusive Pixel features are enough to tide me over. Of course, AI features play a huge part in Google's phones, and the Pixel 9 Pro Axel is no exception. While it doesn't gain as many features as what the Pixel 8 Pro introduced, I do like how the majority of them have a practical purpose. Here's all the new AI feature. First of all, Google Gemini is the virtual assistant that handles everything on the phone from asking it to create a list of places to visit on your vacation to controlling your favorite smart home devices. What's even better is that I can access Gemini Live by pressing on the corresponding button in the Gemini app. What I am impressed most about Gemini Live is the assistant's ability to handle natural conversation. Like when I ask a follow-up question while it's speaking, it's even better that it sounds like I am having a conversation with an actual person.
Getting assistance with augmented reality, the Pixel 9 Pro Excel's new Add Me feature lets me take group photos with the photographer stitched into the photo later. Essentially, you take one photo, then the Pixel 9 Pro Excel guides you to take the second one, with prompts to move closer or further so that the two shots are lined up correctly. Once the second photo is snapped, it then emerges the two with help from AI to produce the final photo. I will admit that it works flawlessly in the photos above that I used to magically add me. Clearly, there are improvements with the Pixel 9 Pro XL apart from its brighter display and longer battery life. Everything else about the Pixel 9 Pro XL feels like its modest upgrade at best, which is made tougher due to its $100 price increase. While the new AI features are helpful, I was hoping for bigger improvements around its camera and processing performance. Given that the Pixel 9 Pro has the same exact camera arrangement as this, there isn't much the justification on picking the Pixel 9 Pro XL for photography. And compared to its direct rivals, the Galaxy S24 Ultra and iPhone 15 Pro Max, they definitely cost more but have better performance overall.